All right. New oil pressure sensor. Took Quadratec 16 days to get it to me. And new intake manifold gaskets. These are from Omix, but I'm sure they're fine. So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use my onboard compressor, take this cover off, kind of blow out around where I'm going to be working, around the intake and around the uh, top of the heads, top of the intake manifold. Get as much dust and crap out of there as I can first. Unhook the battery. Start unbolting stuff. Get the air intake off the throttle body. Start disconnecting the electrical, the map sensor. I think the air temperature sensor is right here. So that needs to come off. Uh, I think this is fuel vapor. That has to come off. I think that's crankcase, PCV. And then I think there's one more. Yeah, right here. The brake booster. That don't need to come off. I think that's it for vacuum lines. I'll get these off. These three lines unclipped off of this. These two bolts right here that this uh, giant connector is sitting on. I might have to take the whole thing off to get room to move this over. This foam piece has to come off so I can get to one of the intake manifold bolts that's back there. And I think that's it. Okay, we'll start with this. I'm sure you could do that without uh, hose pliers. Just use a like a pick or something to get it started. You can use regular pliers to pull it off, but I've got these hose pliers and it makes it way easier. Throttle body, air intake, temperature, map sensor, and then a bunch of uh, little Christmas tree clips that we're holding it in here, 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 and then one little clip here. Just using a little trim remover tool. Pop those out. I'm trying to get this brake booster hose off. That thing is, that thing is rock hard on there. So. Keep fighting with that. Got the two vent hoses off here. And then I gotta get the back.
trim piece off on that side, but it's coming apart pretty easy so far. Alright, I'm just going to let that brake booster hose soak in some WD-40 and I'm going to start working on the back piece back here. This is actually a transfer case vent, I think. So good. That guy was on there really tough. I sprayed some WD-40 on it and just let it soak and it came right off after that. So, Okay, I'm going to start getting these, these two bolts out right here, these two nuts. There's two more back here, right here. Luckily my air compressor is not getting in the way, I was afraid I was going to have to move it, so we'll see. And there's two more on that side, but let's start right here. Hmm. Well, technically the intake is free other than the seven bolts. Let me get those bolts out. It's these guys. There's one right here. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's seven of them, I think, so. Let's take them out and just wiggle that intake and see what happens. So these stupid brackets right here, I can't lift it up far enough to get it up over here. I can't lift it up on this side far enough to slide it that way so I can get it out from under that. Alright, so I'm going to take this bracket completely off 
Let's see what I can do to loosen that one back there just so it'll lean out a little bit. Start with the easy one. All right, so once again, I find myself with the wheel off and the fender pulled out of the way, this time on the driver's side. And if you look right there to the right of the oxygen sensor is the, I think it's a 13 millimeter nut on that stud or that bracket. There's the left side. So. I think if I didn't have the air compressor in there, I'd have room to get it from the top, but here I am. Oh, don't tell me this isn't long enough. There we go. There. Actually, don't want to move it all the way. Okay, yeah, it's a stud. I just want it really, really loose. Okay, let's see if we can get it pulled back now. Is anyone else, or is it just me, where no matter where you put your work light, it always ends up pointing right in your eyes and blinding you. Okay, let's try to get it off now. Okay. There's the lower. I'm gonna shove some rags down in there. Alright, I'm at the point now where I need to start disconnecting the coils and the injectors. So I'm going to do that on this side and pull out these little uh, more plastic Christmas tree clips so that I can just take this whole harness and push it out of the way. i got a bungee cord holding this stuff up now. Um, but I'm going to do it on this side to try to get an understanding of how to best do it on that side because that side has a whole lot more going on with the main electrical harness there, that bracket that holds it, there's 
two or three coolant lines going across. So it's a little bit more difficult to get to. So I'm going to do this side first, figure out what I need to do to get it on that side. All right, so look at this. I got these undone coils. I started undoing a couple other things in this main harness, like the alternator and stuff. But I'm gonna go ahead and unbolt the lower, and just try to pick it up and lift it this way, just enough where I can get in there with the socket to get that sensor out. Cause this seems to have enough slack. This has got a good amount of slack. I took that bracket that's holding this huge connector on and just bent it up, just pried it up, and uh, got some more room there. So, yeah, I'm just going to unbolt the eight bolts holding the lower on and see if I can get it out. If not, I'll take something else apart. All right, I'm under the lower. Shove some rags in the cylinder heads so I can worry about that a little less, but I can see it. There's the temperature sensor, the red one, and right below it. Oh, can't really see it, but right below it is the oil pressure sensor. So I'm going to fiddle with it from here. I've got it held up with a bungee cord. I'm going to see if I can get it out from right here. I don't know though. About to find out. All right, more progress. I undid that one uh, injector harness right there. Right there where the light is. I did that one electri or, uh, injector harness so that I could raise the lower manifold up just a little bit more. And now I can get down in there a little better to those sensors. I got the oil temperature sensor undone. Let's just slide that little red lock back. And then you have to push the uh, main lock in so it's just like squeezing a regular connector. I don't know what it is. My Jeep, every single connector on this thing is like frozen solid. So I had to get in there with these. They are uh, fuel line clip removers. See, they're basically just uh, pliers um, with a head that looks like that. So that I could actually squeeze that connector hard enough to pull it back. Every single connector on my Jeep is like that. It's frozen solid. So you might not need that. But now I'm working on the actual oil pressure sensor right below it. 
All right. And undid the second fuel injector harness on the left side. This one right here. So that I could raise it up even more. So I can get my hands down there a little better. And sure enough, oh, see that little blue clip? That is a disconnected oil pressure sensor. So what I'm going to do now is use this. This is a special socket. This is a oil pressure sensor socket. Part number 4673-5. Now basically what all it is is a very deep 1 and 1 16th socket. Very deep. Uh, it comes in part of this kit. Uh, this is a 8 piece sensor socket set from OTC. So I've, I've seen other people do this without a special tool. They just use a wrench or a uh, adjustable. But this is what I'm going to use because I have it, and I'm going to use it on the end of a uh, micro tooth flex head ratchet. So I'm going to try to get in there and hook it and get it out. <clears throat> okay, so I just keep disassembling it more and more <laughs> as I keep working on it. So I undid the third injector harness on this side. Now I can really get in there and uh, hopefully get that thing off. Still struggling with it, but we are close to the halfway point. Alright, I'm at the point now where I'm just sick of fighting with it. I cannot get that um, oil pressure sensor out. I just cannot get on it with my socket, my sensor socket. I can't get on it with a wrench. I even had my fiance go get me a 1 and 1 16th wrench from an auto parts store. I just cannot get onto it from where I am, so tired of fighting with it. I'm gonna use a quarter inch socket, and I'm just gonna go ahead and take the five bolts out of the entire oil oil cooler assembly and lift the whole thing out and try to get to it a little better. Okay, five minutes, and that's out. Now I can get to that sensor, and it dumped oil. There was no no oil in this valley. Now there's a ton still draining right there. So just be aware of that. I'm going to clean that up as best I can. Wipe it out really good before I put this uh, oil cooler back in. All right, let's get this sensor out finally.
Okay, so here's the situation. I have a whole new oil cooler. So I followed my old one for probably two hours again, just trying to get the oil pressure sensor out. And I realized why it wouldn't come out. This brass insert that is pressed into the plastic of this assembly is spinning inside of this assembly so every time I would turn this oil pressure sensor trying to get it out it was just spinning that insert not moving so I'm sure it would leak now I could probably put epoxy around it or something and finish getting this out or the old sensor out and put the new one in but <clears throat> I don't want to do this job again so went to the dealership unfortunately bought a whole new assembly 320 bucks but it comes with both sensors and has an oil filter already in it so I've been working on this way too long I'm just going to uh, swap this in I gotta undo the coolant hose right here off the other one swap it to this one get it bolted back in uh, I gotta clean up the oil that's in the valley now because it's full of oil um, so yeah it's been I've been working on this too long so I'm just gonna put my head down and get this done
actually falling off of you. Okay. Injectors are still on. Plugs are back on. Injectors are on this side. Okay. Upper is back on. Now it is just reattaching brackets, vacuum lines, and that giant electrical connector. And put the airbox back on. Put a little bit of oil in it since I spilled so much. And fire it up.
think I'm done. I'm trying to start it. Okay, I think I have it all buttoned up. I'm gonna do the same thing where I prime it like I did for the oil pump, just because the entire, um, the, all the um, oil that was in the top of the engine drained out when I took that oil cooler off. So I'm going to prime it just a little bit. I put some more oil in it to account for the amount that I splashed everywhere and spilled. So here we go, foot to the floor. I have zero oil pressure, that's a good sign. There we go. Alright. Alright, I know I got oil to the top of the motor, so I'm going to turn it on now. Well, it's running, so that's good. Don't see any obvious problems. Okay, it's been two days, oil pressure is back to normal, and it's not leaking, so I'm calling it fixed.